Sang is just around the city. Sight is in the everyday, and all objects, places, and all the things we interact with basically uh, have words. The power of psychology is subliminal. And as our speaker will expound on further, sight has the power to enhance sight. Big words, uh, but they will make sense. This rich visual culture on site has led me and my my partner in Africa to start people Filipino. In November 2019, we staged the first exhibit featuring sites inspired by Filipino suits. In two months, we managed to bring together design studios and independent site designers to participate in create site spaces greatly inspired by visuals found in their immediate surroundings. The launch of the exhibit was part of the year's Escota Block Festival flight. And for many of the designers in the room, it was the first time to meet colleagues from other studios. We all followed each other on the internet, but never had the chance to get together in real life. So creating opportunities for designers to interact with each other and discuss relevant topics on our profession was something Vince and I wanted to continue at. So here are some of the work. This is Aaron Amar, one of our um, participating best designers in Flight From our roundtable discussion. After successfully bringing it to the Tuxtagalan de Oro for Oro Decide Conference in January 2020, we were on our way to finalizing plans to bring the same exhibit to Cebu uh, in Visayas and Baguio. We were also supposed to have a talk on that same week that they announced the lockdown in, in Manila in Ateneo. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we were all postponed. Fast forward to today, uh, Tibo Filipino has transformed into an incubator, exploring the intersection of type design and Philippine culture, allowing locality and in locality to influence the practice of Filipino type design. Tibo Filipino aims to be a starting point for for a discussion about the production or narrative of our nation through graphic design. So, there are a lot of ways to tackle Filipino types from lettering and hand painted letters, typography and working with layout and type, or type design or font making. Um, there are also other methods of type design that are unique to the Philippines, like incorporating types in weaving, furniture, and other products. For Filipino, which is a type design mentorship and exhibit this year, we would like to fill the the gap, um, the lack of type design education in the Philippines. So we're focusing now on digital types. For this year, um, for this year's Filipino, uh, it's designed to give importance to the practice of refining your your letter form. So adding refinement to your creative process. We tell our mentees, while it would be great to see them succeed in becoming site designers after the program, we don't expect them to. What's great about hyper-focusing on a letter is that it provides you with the great attention to detail, which is beneficial to whatever, whichever creative endeavor you may have. So just behind the scenes of um, creating the posters or things you know. Together with Japan Foundation Manila, who granted us with the cultural grant, I'd like to warmly welcome you to today's keynote. This keynote, Nothing is Impossible, aims to give Filipino designers a new perspective towards type and graphic design. Our speaker is Keitaro Sakamoto, General Manager for Branding and Communication of Marisawa and Kopi. As the leading font found in Japan, Marisawa's portrait motto is contributing to society through typography. For nine years, they strongly believe in the power that typeface have, and they have sought and offered the best solutions for each year. While large families normally employ 20 to 30 people, Morisawa has 270 employees. Their body of work is ubiquitous, and nearly all Japanese designers use Morisawa fonts regularly. Eta Sakamoto joined Morisawa in 20, 2008, where he led projects to Universal Design Typeface and TypeSquare, a cloud-based font distribution. Eta is the person behind reviving 
Morisawa Type Design Competition 10 years after its last run, inviting domestic and overseas talent to participate. In 2010, Kaitaro studied abroad as a research fellow in Rhode Island School of Design, majoring in graphic design and digital media. He has done significant engagement, improving Morisawa's international re recognition, such as speaking in atypical, atypical, and participating as a guest judge at the Good Design Awards 26. So, um, well, we can't really give a warm applause, so if you could just send your emojis away, please welcome Mr. Keita Rosakampoto. <laughs> Thank you, Clara, for great introduction. And yeah, also, can, can you see my screen? Good. Thank you. All right, so, uh, Magandang Arrow. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Keitaro Sakamoto, and I'm very much honored to be invited as a keynote speaker today. And also, the, my colleague, uh, Karin, she's a, a, a type design planner, is uh, seeing this conference together. So, uh, we will be happy to answer your question after my talk. Maybe you already have several questions in your mind. Well, this summer is sweltering in my hometown, Tokyo, but I hear that the climate of the Philippines is about the same temperature as Japanese summer throughout the year. Today, it's also a hot summer day here in Tokyo, and I think I can talk in the same feeling as everyone in the Philippines. And I gave the title of this talk as Nothing is Impossible. I'm sure uh, we we'll all know that there is a next level or even a whole new world that you can perceive after tons of practice and training. I'd like to give the best example in Japanese food, a sushi chef. They are sushi making robots, and yes, they are handy practical and precise, but the sushi made by a sushi master who had years of training that makes sushi that is far more delicious. I see that there are 157 sushi restaurants in Tamiya, and I suppose you may easily imagine a Japanese sushi chef making the sushi. How about the Japanese type designer making a typeface? Today, I'd like to start my talk by introducing the work of my colleagues who are type designers. So this is Sakura. She has 10 years of career as a type designer at Morisawa. We now are mostly working from home instead of going to our office due to COVID-19. Here is the image of her working space at her home, which is very simple. The greatest part of being a type designer is that you can work anywhere you want. All you need is a laptop. Sakura has just finished her heavy lifting Latin typeface project. When our designers explore their images for designing types, they start by drawing sketches by hand, the pen-like tool next to the same technical pencil, or this one, uh, is an eraser. It has a similar function as a technical pencil, and you can just click the top, and the eraser will come out. It is very useful for subtle adjustments on hand drawn sketches. Here, uh, oh, he is Yuya. Uh, he has uh, seven years of career as a type designer at Morisawa. 
it is his desk at his home. Again, his working space also looks simple. I think I should ask him for more pictures that show how his entire room looks like. He is currently working on a Japanese type project. What he uses to expand his idea is a dictionary of the uh, dictionary of letters. It includes old scripts of Japanese and Chinese. It helps him explore ideas from traditional designs. Now you may think that we are working individually on each project, but we don't. The Japanese typeface design process is usually based on teamwork. Other than designers, we have directors, engineers, or quality assurance testers on one project. We would need at least five people to work on a project, but it depends on the scale. And we would obviously need more people for more significant projects. Then why do we need that much effort? It is simply because of the nature of the Japanese script. Here, these are my introduction in English and Japanese. I'm showing this not to introduce my background, but to compare the differences between Latin alphabets and Japanese letters. How many of you have seen the Japanese text before? On the right side, you can see that we use some Latin alphabets and Roman numerals. Yes, we Japanese use different scripts in, our, in one text in our daily lives, such as kanji, kana, uh, Latin, and numerals. I'd like to explain about the Japanese grammar system briefly, and it focuses on kana script. So let's start the Japanese language class. This is a Japanese novel. Normally, it is written in vertical way. There are a lot of stories about the Japanese writing system, but let me put it aside this time. Let's take a closer look. For example, all these complex angular characters are kanji. And these two compose one part is to compose one word. And kanji is a phonogram, like emoji today. And we can express the meaning of words in a few letters. There are small round characters next to them. These are kana. Kana let us know how to read complex kanji and how to pronounce it. It is a common situation that we don't know how to pronounce the kanji, even we can see what piece is constructed. In that case, kana helps us. This is one function of kana. Next, let's look at the whole novel. Please make sure this is written in vertical way. Kanji has angular shapes. I put a map on them. Uh, only this much. The uh, rest of them are kana. So, what is the role of kana? To understand that, uh, we need to look back on the history. This is one of the oldest Japanese books. I guess you can see angular shapes in it. Yes, it's written in only Chinese characters. Until the Chinese character was transmitted from China as a character that describes a sentence, we Japanese didn't have any original unit characters. Unfortunately, Chinese and Japanese have totally different grammars. It was hard for Japanese to adopt the Chinese language system. Therefore, we borrowed Chinese characters. 
then we have gradually got used to the imported characters by using the characters which have a similar sound to Japanese or by changing the order in accordance with the Japanese grammar. Kana was invented in that process. We cut down some Chinese characters to indicate the, uh, the order of the reading. For example, this kanji has a R sound, and we created kana that has the same sound of a with rounded shape to distinguish from the original kanji metaphor. Today, we have only six basic kana characters. I will show you a simple analogy in English. The lower letters are the translation in Japanese. Let me mark that to the English because I try a car. The rest of letters are kana. As you can see, kana complement the meaning between words. Without kana, I cannot understand the whole meaning of this sentence exactly. Well, it was a small Japanese class that helped you could understand that. I just wanted to explain how we treat different scripts in our grammar system. The same as other Asian countries, we Japanese also love to mix up different cultures, even if it's complex, and we believe it creates something new. That's a way of thinking we have. Let's keep talking about Japanese. Some of you may know that how many characters do you think that Jap Japanese font have nowadays? Five thousand? Ten thousand? This is Adobe Japan 1 6 character sets and it contains more than 20,000 words. Is it in a tremendous number? Of course, we have smaller character sets, but to satisfy professional creation, our major typefaces need to meet this large standard. Then, how do we create fonts? Any specific tricks to complete the whole characters? The answer is no. But if I pick up one big difference from other scripts, when we produce Japanese typeface, we do not work as an individual, but as several teams, which are mainly divided into four teams. Key design, expansion, checking, and formatting. Once the concept of typeface is determined, the designer makes the major 500 letters. These 500 letters are the key design, which have many parts in common with many other letters. These are two samples of real sketches. We have the original 6 cm square grid sheet to draw a typeface. Until only 10 years ago, we used this paper and draw every letter by hand. Right now, all of our designers use software in their drawing. Not everyone understands that choice of tools doesn't matter. The important thing is how much you can be a creative in designing the details. Let me show you an example. These are kanji characters. Each has the same part in the left side in common, as you can see. Let's take a look. This means a pine tree. This means forest. And this means a branch. All characters here are related with, with a tree in some part. The same left part means a tree. And the right side adds some specific meaning. Make sense? If I lay over everything, you may notice something from this image. 
Even if the, each kanji has the same part, we design each typeface individually. Because the shape of the right part in each kanji has different shape. The system of kanji is like the brick, Lego, but the type design should not be taken such easy way. We design each character really carefully one by one, and that creates our quality. After finishing key design, several designers work together in order to expand letters to meet the required character sets. It is not yet the end of process, even when the letter production is completed. We output some of the heavy use vocabularies and check them with tons of sheets of paper. In this step, we will keep small modifications of the design. After these efforts, now we have hundreds of typefaces in our original library. I hope you recognize my company, Morisawa, since a great deal of that design. Now, I'd like to show you one of successful example of Japanese typeface. That is Shingo family, which was released in 1990s. Today, Shingo can be seen everywhere in Japan. You can even say it's a part of the Japanese landscape. The reason why it is used so widely is that it brought an innovation to the process of the Japanese typeface production. This is a one of the popular sunsets in the 1980s, before the fame came to Shingo. Japanese typefaces at that time, we didn't have good quality of family typefaces. These samples can be images from the old specimen. Every weight stands alone, like MSN, BSP. Every weight was produced as an individual form, and as a result, they became a group. Sometimes different designers created each weight individually. Strictly speaking, they were not family yet. What happened? Yes, of course, it's because handwritten one by one, there were no computer that designer can use. So that means Every process was analog at the time. Have you ever seen this machine? This is a, a phototype setting machine. It inputs letters by using technology of photography. My company Morisawa invented this machine for Japanese letters, and that machine was widely used in the Japanese printing and publishing companies until 1980s. Instead of using a metal type like monotype and line type, this machine used the method of photo printing letters on a photographic paper by keeping light to a glass letter mode. This is not a digital camera, so this is an angle camera. There were metal type in Japan back then, but imagine that there are thousands of letters to set if you are in printing and publishing industry. In this way, our phototype setting machine spread out in the market. However, as you know, in the days of personal computers, such machines are no longer needed. Instead of making this glass plate, the type foundry had to create a digital font. We had to revolutionize the process of font production. So in the process of creating Shingo, we converted the creation process into a systematic workflow, which is totally different from the previous press process. For example, we classified common parts in kanji characters so that anyone can draw characters in the same design. Of course, each part is sorted really 
carefully if they slightly differ. This innovative change has contributed to the improvement of the production efficiency since the Japanese language requires a large, large number of characters. The Japanese characters are designed in a square shapes, so it also contributes to system size. The other breakthrough was that we make this typeface highly versatile with bringing the idea of family in Latin typefaces. The chief designer of Shingo, or Mr. Kozuka, describes the concept of Shingo in his book as follows. Instead of Japanese sans serif at that time, curved line and the influence of the metal type. I truly wanted to create a Japanese sunset with a homogeneous line with a sinking letter. As a consequence, the linear portion becomes almost horizontal and vertical, and the curved portion was not like organic lines such as handwriting anymore. Lines are as if written in a card ruler or arc, and this makes shingle to be born to be a modern typeface. After 20 years from the release, with the demand for the visibility and the changing of design trends, it has evolved into UD shingle as our first universal design form that cares about readability and legibility much more. In 2013, we also made condensed versions in 40 different ways. Each of them is an individual font with 50 to 90% compressibility. For your information, each has the largest character set. Yes, it's more than 20,000 clips. The evolution of Shingo never stops. The typeface Shingo are adapted in many other languages. Have you ever hear the word CJK? CJK stands for Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. We began the development of Chinese and Korean typefaces based on the Japanese UD Shingo in response to the, some social demands. This graph shows the number of inbound tourists to Japan. Of course, it is changing due to the COVID-19, but the number of tourists has increased rapidly in the past several years. And uh, a few years ago, almost 70% of the tourists from China, Korea, Taiwan, and Hong Kong actually I could frequently hear people talking in Chinese, Cantonese, or Korean in the city of Tokyo where I live in. On the other hand, this contrasting graph shows an opposed fact. This is the Japanese population. With the decrease of the birth rate, it's said that Japanese population is declining and it will be half before uh, 2100. I'm not an expert on social studies, but it's not difficult to imagine that in the future, the Japanese people will need to communicate with foreign visitors more actively than ever. These facts push the development of Chinese and Korean. However, since Japanese and Chinese, Japanese and Korean are different, the development has not been easy. Chinese characters is used in Greater China, huh? and Japanese kanji have in common. There are some slight differences between them. Characters on the left side are showing Japanese kanji characters, which is similar to Japanese traditional characters. The right side is showing simplified Chinese characters. Simplified Chinese 
Chinese is using the uh, uh, mainland of China, the number of strokes is decreased, and the form of a proportion is simplified. Those have same meaning basically, but you would recognize how simply the right one are. Here is another particular example. This is a Chinese character which means born. We write in this way in Japanese, but uh, they write in this way in Chinese. But the direction of the orientation of the internal square is different as you can see. So we have a bunch of similar cases. So in terms of the design of typeface, it means that we had to create several characters that we do not have appeared in Japanese kanji. So the biggest concern for us was the number of characters. It required almost 30,000 characters to meet the Chinese national standard. However, uh, since the production was occurred in the world factory and in China, the capacity was not a problem eventually, and we got there. Korean Hangul is completely different from Chinese character or Japanese kanji. Hangul character is composed by phonetic symbols. The way of reading in Korean and Japanese are different. Japanese kanji is ideogrammed and interpreted by the shape, but Korean is interpreted by reading the flow of a combination of parts that forms a character. To bring the sense of unity with Japanese Shingo, we need a different approach from making Chinese. Shingo is a typeface which contains large space in the characters. In the case of Japanese, it made us easy to read because we can recognize its shape at glance. But in the case of the Hangul characters, simply made a large character itself, it doesn't work because the space disturbs the recognition of the character. So how design the shape space is very crucial. So in the end, in creating of Hangul, we succeeded to adjust the counter space using the guides to bring the pace of signal. But we had another problem, which is, is to bring the unity between Japanese and Korean. This is because that Hangul has many circles and rounded parts in the letters, which Japanese kanji doesn't have. Now, some of you may notice we have kana. Let's compare how much different shape they have. The upper is kanji, and the other is kana. In kanji, there's no circle in each letter. You can say kana, has much more curved lines and some circles than kanji. Based on that, uh, we could adjust the weight of the handle, which has many rounded parts. Uniform consistency was created both in Japanese and handle. Now you know the story of UD Shingo, CJK. Designs born in Japan may become the basis of Asian design. Yudi Shingo has already covered CJK and Latin alphabet. And a few years ago, it had covered Pi, Indian, Arabic script. Setting one Japanese typeface as our starting point, Many linguistic experts and typographers from all over the world are involved to this UD Shingo project. It was a big challenge for us to develop a multi-script typeface as we had been only designed Japanese typefaces. Thanks to all the great support from our partners, we were delighted to succeed in the next stage. Then we have another topic other than type design. That is Morisawa type design competition. The last one was uh, 
2019. The competition invites innovative expressions mm -hmm. and ambiguously groundbreaking works of Taipei's mm -hmm. design from all around the world. To discover new design and ambitious type designers in the world, we have been held in Morisawa type design competition since 1984. This is a picture from the first competition. You can see there was Adrian Couture in the bottom right. Designers and experts who lead each field uh, joined as the judges members and they evaluated entry marks. Regardless of professionals or students, for over 30 years, this international competition has been renowned as a gateway to future success for typeface designs. In 2019, we received more than 800 entries from 53 countries and regions. Most specifically, 2,850 works for Japanese category and 550 works for Latin categories. We held the award ceremony on the day before Big Type Conference, A Type by Tokyo. And we also held an exhibition at, at the Bojo's Bookstore in Ginza, Tokyo, under the name of Type Design Discovery. So in this event, we introduced not only the award-winning works, but also the 30 years history of the competition and its stories behind. And also, we presented the working process of Morisawa funds and actual equipment, tools, and original drawings. Ginza is a high-class shopping district. We succeeded to gather many, many people during the holding period, period. I was there, of course, and I was so happy to see people stopped by and took many pictures. We set our company mind as enhancing society through typography. To raise understanding of typefaces in general public is also one of our important activities. I believe it simply leads to a better world where people appreciate creativity with each other. Sakura and Yula, Yuya are continuing to strive as a design. They have joined the Latin typeface development project since uh, 2018. Having Marshall Carter as a supervisor, they completed the excellent Latin type with the mentor Finch Paul Cano and our team members. That is a role typeface. The role is available in all classes, Serif, Sans, Slav, and Sound, and three optical sizes, S, Display, and banner. The super family, consisting of 200 styles in total, this typeface allows expressing the delicate change of feelings. This is serif, sounds, slab, soft. Last year, it was selected as an official typeface for the US design and media company, Print, established in 1940. Surprisingly, this type was the, uh, oh, sorry. So, so to join this 
role project. Uh, it stimulates uh, Sakura and Yuya's uh, creativity. And Sakura had designed a very beautiful Latin typeface original design of her own called Sharoa. It will be released in Japan this autumn. To get details, uh, simple design makes it harder to give originality, but I think you can see that it, it's carefully designed. Yuya is working on both Japanese and Latin projects. What he is working on is variable fonts. He is not satisfied with just altering weights or styles. He is passionate and seems to want more and aims for a font with an unlimited design transformation. Let's see. So well, you may know as uh, what is very what the variable font is. But in this trial for font, you can adjust the style not only the weights, but also the styles as you want. Like uh, serif style to sans style. Like any other general design, uh, character set, font format, and tech design have many constraints, and it seems that everything is already structured and classified, and everything is determined. However, seeing young designers like Asakura or Yuya striving and seeking a new interpretation of type design and bringing something that never existed before makes me proud to have such colleagues. And tell myself, yes, nothing is impossible. All right, maybe that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sekaru-san. And right, uh, one more thing. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, if you know, some stories I talked about today were uh, shared at the A Type Y conference in uh, of YouTube channel in more detail. If you are interested, please find uh, with A Type Y, A P Y T I, and Morisawa and enjoy the video. Thank you, Mr. Sun. We will be sharing that also to our participants. Thank you. Let's give him a virtual round of applause. <laughs> All right. So, well, at this point, we will be having a Q and A portion, question and answer portion. So, if you have questions, um, please type them on our chat box here in our Zoom room. And for those who are joining us in our streaming um, platforms, Facebook and YouTube, you can also send your questions over there. Um, but to start off, I have one question uh, for uh, Tisa Lusan. Uh, so, how could knowing the fundamentals of type uh, benefit any kind of creative who isn't necessarily a type designer? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Just to start thinking about <laughs> because a lot of a lot of our participants, um, I think I did mention this really, uh, earlier this week. We're still starting out as um, a community, as a type design community in the Philippines. So a lot of us are actually graphic designers first before embarking on this journey in type design. So. Uh, what would you say uh, would be the benefit of knowing the fundamentals of type? Hmm. Let's see. Oh, maybe my colleague may have 
the answer of that question. Karin, could hi. you um, speak out? Hi. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, okay, hi, my name is Karin. Uh, I work under Kitaro. I am. Hi. <laughs> I am a type planner. I do some design, do some uh, project project management stuff. So, yeah, nice to meet you. Uh, how type design would help, right? Um, uh, I believe that it's good to have some knowledge about typography and fonts that are available to use, especially learning what kind of fonts are appropriate for your designs whether it being a graphic, editorial, PowerPoint, or anything that involves text. Like, uh, for example, like you wouldn't want to use Comic Sans in your essays. You would probably want to use something more serious looking and more appropriate. And having some sort of knowledge about type would definitely help. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Ben, and thanks for joining. Uh, we have another question in the chat box. Um, Joe, uh, who is also uh, uh, our mentor in um, the Type Design uh, Mentorship in Exhibit, uh, she says, I'm curious, how does Kato Design team manage the Type Design project, especially when working with a number of individuals? Like, is there a main type designer who checks everything from start to finish? or a different person in charge per phase. Like I guess more of like your workflow in terms of being of working as a team. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm doing like I, I'm a kind of uh, manager so uh, I'm not so much involved in the actual project but in, uh, in my team is like doing uh, project management and yeah, there are a bunch of ways to, you know, uh, to to get efficiency of the uh, yeah. uh, creation. But the the most important thing is you know the believing designers and. Mm -hmm. And and just setting the deadline. That's it. You know, <laughs> the designer has a very good you know creativity, and they have a lot of ideas. So uh, it's important to respect of each of them. And it's a big important thing is you know to, to keep the deadline. Yeah. Agree. Okay. Uh, we have another question. Um, would like this is from our friends in Japan Foundation Manila. Would like to ask Sakamoto San about Morisawa's experience in designing the system for the Olympics. I think that's something that we later on found out that um, your your type system was used in the Olympics, in the current Olympics. So we'd like to know more about that. Oh yeah, uh, you know, you know <laughs> it is under the uh, NDA contract thing, so uh, non-disclosure agreement things. So I just pick out that it's on the uh, their official website, but you know that they ask us uh, they need uh, uh, much readability and legibility. But, uh, initial, as an initial idea, so yeah, and, and yeah, and and then we provided uh, the most appropriate uh, typeface, and also the Latin, yeah, Latin was the, uh, oh that may be. A MPA, so yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. We it, it's, it's very quite short period, so yeah, that was tough. Ah, uh, all right, all right. Um, so we have uh, Leia, who is from Canada, who's calling from Canada. 
Arshia, what was your journey getting into a career of tech design? What sparked the drive or the interest for you? How did we get here? <laughs> well, uh, I yeah, actually, I, I didn't have a uh, design background. Uh, when I was in university, I was in law department, so it's totally outside of design, the law. Law? So, ah. yeah. How <laughs> So, but uh, once we get in uh, Morizawa, I found that the uh, typeface is used in everywhere so mm. i can go i can go everywhere like you know the not only uh publishing the printing company but also the gaming company or anywhere you want you know, the cell phone company if you like cell phone and you can go to you know like uh, so for for example sony panasonic and yeah maybe, that is yeah, very interesting yeah I, what yeah, would you say I, what would you say made you so so is it because um it allowed you to work um and be exposed to uh different cultures because as you did mm -hmm. say earlier very international um like what at what moment did you realize like oh I, I think I like that design <laughs> instead of taking up law. Yes. Well, I, I was just interested in, in uh, uh, graphic design or, you know, uh, maybe fashion or magazine. So, and I found mm. the typeface funny. Oh, 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 oh. I, I didn't know that, but it's, it's interesting. Yeah. That, that was my story. But Karen has a, a design background. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I always liked okay. art. Um, I, uh, my favorite subjects in high school when I did IB was visual arts and design technology. So I was always interested in arts, especially mm -hmm. I, while I was thinking about what which you need to go to, I was looking at graphic design. Mm -hmm. And that's when I found out what font like type designers were and I got a little bit interested in that and that's how I went to study in Reading. Um, I didn't really take type design as a course, I took graphic communication but there I learned mm -hmm. more about typography and the world of type design and I got interested and yeah, I, I somehow landed here <laughs> in Morisawa. <laughs> And Are you calling from Tokyo also, Karin? Oh, I'm in Osaka, in Osaka. Japan. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have. I think we can do uh, one more question. Um, so John Tan says, I think besides the twenty thousand characters, the next challenge here is how the font engineers translate these characters into the QWERTY cube keyboard. Are there new digital typing innovations being developed now? Well, we are calling the engineers every time. So, yeah, <laughs> if you have skills, yeah, please join us. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah, actually, we, we need uh, many people. And of mm. course, we have the uh, uh, original software to improve our efficiency, but it's not enough. We, we need people with passion. Like for Latin characters or for <laughs> Japanese characters? For all projects. For all? <laughs> all all right. languages. Okay. Oh, there, there is like a fresh engineering graduate in the room. <laughs> We can actually, um, we can probably uh, accommodate all the answers. So I'll try to go back to the other one. Uh, Marco is also a mentor um, for our program. Uh, he asked, 
Are you using any component system on the font, or are they all decomposed and unique until this day? I can imagine the two type files increasing in size with all the unique vector and position. You know, that's a big file for so 20,000. Uh, you mean, do, do we have any special tools for the to compose the, the large characters? I think, I think, yes, I think what he's interested in knowing is if the file, if the final um, type file, the true type file that you use, um, has it's it all packed in one true type file instead of. Um, having separate and uh, unique system, if that makes any sense. Marco, feel free to um, chime in also. <laughs> yeah, so is there a way to keep the file size small? Um, yes, yes. Uh, uh, right. So, mm, mm, so, the uh, so for so our, the file size of our basic uh, serif typeface, for example, it's a uh, ten megabyte, five to ten megabyte in the one file, and Ooh. yeah, it, it it's very large, but it's still uh, you know the uh, satisfy the standards. So yeah. Yes, yes, it's not that yes. it's not that huge actually. And if it's exported as a web font, we have a special uh, service so to to reduce the uh, file size. But uh, for the, the the font for the laptops or uh, your PCs, uh, yeah, when we get the larger numbers, uh, the file size get larger. All right, we'll then answer your question, Marco. Uh, we have another one. I've heard of fonts being created for dyslexia and ADHD. Does Japan have similar projects? Or is that not an issue given the unique character? This is from Catherine. Um, I, I, I recall reading about your universal design typeface. Maybe that has something to do with it. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't catch you enough. Uh, um, Karen? Uh, hi. Catherine, yes. Can you make the answer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, Karen, that's okay. Were you able to uh, catch that? Yeah, about whether we have a Japanese font for dyslexic and ADHD. Was that yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I'm not entirely sure because. Uh, I wasn't personally um, involved in any projects about that, but I think the the universal font that we have are made to be made to have really high legibility and readability. So I believe that it could help, but I'm not very confident with my answers, unfortunately. Oh, oh right, right. Uh, so we have one uh, universal. Or typeface uh, that is for the textbook, and it is now widely used in the uh, element, the textbook for elementary school or high school, and it mm -hmm. might be the one of example of that. So, so yeah, it helps uh, people to have something with their eyes or, or accuracy uh, to read. Uh, to, to get in the, uh, to understand the, what, what is mm. written, yeah. Do you, what, what is the name of this typeface that uh, you are designing for textbook? Uh, you, you the <laughs> digital, uh, Kyo Kasho is a, a, a textbook in Japanese, so it, it's, it's totally Japanese uh, it's typeface. Especially so. All right. Yeah, but it's bundled with the Windows OS, so yeah, many schools is using 
to make uh, uh, you know the documents uh, or test papers for I mean the examining paper for the students. All right, thank you. Thanks, thanks again, um, Katerin. Uh, do we have other questions here? Um, no. So we have another one. Do you have experience creating quirky and unusual type design for Tadji and Kana? Like less, more for, um, I, I guess, more for like displays, uh, use and not um, just more creative um, application on site. If you would have a um, personal experience, uh, or uh, Karen. I am involved in some display type in Japanese. Um, there, there are like, how would I put this? There's a lot of room for design in kana because they're sim they're, they are simple shape. For, for kanji, it, it, it gets a little bit um, difficult and complicated because of the many strokes. And if it's like too quirky, there will be legibility issues and readability issues. So there's a lot of, a lot of things to think about. And another thing about um, display type, we actually have another um, character set because because the because they're not going to be used for like a long like textbooks or like novels, there the number of kanji that are used commonly are reduced. Like ugh, how do I put this? There aren't like there, we only put like commonly used kanji in these character sets, so we can limit this to like around four thousand five thousand characters. So it's easier for us to produce new um, new fonts now, especially if we're um, experimenting. We can, we have like, we like if it's like a big project with 20K, of course, we're gonna have to use a lot of time. But if it's like a character set of like 4,000, we don't, we can shorten the amount of time when we make these. So we have a lot of room for making new designs. Mm. Uh, I think we'll accommodate one more last question, uh, but thank you, thank you, Karen. Uh, Triksha asks, after the Olympics, what are your other dream type design projects? Uh, we can start with um, Kate Bello and then um, Karen after. Well, you know, uh, the next expo will be come to, coming to uh, Osaka, Japan in yeah. 2025. So, wow. yeah, we want to be involved on that project if they invite us. That's, very, that's a very big event. Um, how about you, uh, Kari? Uh, well, um, the current projects I'm working on are like projects that other people did and I'm expanding the weights to or like managing like project management stuff. So yeah. my short term goal is to have a font that I designed myself. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of want to start you have, there. Do you have already have a brewing concept? Uh... I, I do, but... I'm like I'm not. Mom. They're not pretty enough. <laughs> still, still embarrassed Aww. to show my boss. It's still a work in progress. Well, we yeah. can't wait to see more of that. Um, yeah. Well, I think that's it. If our mentees and all all our other participants have questions, we would be happy to share them to Kateru, and then they'll send over the questions. But once again. Thank you so, so much to Morisawa and for joining us to this afternoon. Please give them a round of applause. And for everyone tuning in to our stream, thank you too. Um, and for our participants, uh, for our mentees, we'll see you uh, over the weekend. But to everyone else, have a great weekend. Thank you again. 
Kay Taro and Karen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Salamat. Salamat. Arigato. Arigato.